Hello and a big welcome to BMW Motorrad. Today is a day lots of motorcycle fans worldwide, as well as all of us at BMW Motorrad, have very much been looking forward to. A milestone in the history of BMW Motorrad. The world premiere of the M1000 RR, the very first BMW M model on two wheels. I'm very happy that we can show the world this fantastic bike together with the all-new BMW M3 and BMW M4. All three reflect the unique and thrilling BMW M DNA. And I'm proud that Markus Flasch is here with me today. Markus is the CEO of BMW M, so nobody else than Markus can tell us about the BMW M DNA. Markus. Thanks for having me, Markus. I'm amazed. This is far better than what I expected. I mean, M is the most powerful letter in the world. Racing is part of our DNA, and I'm a personal motorcycle fan. So for me, it's just plain logic that we finally cooperate on motorcycles. This is an absolute beauty. And we have set standards. We have went to new territories in the past. We are almost 50 years existing now for uh, BMW M. We started with the M1, but then we set benchmarks in the business sedan segments like M3, M5, we went into new territories with the X5M, the X6M, and again we set the benchmark. So I think it's time to set another benchmark and now go into motorcycles together with you. I can't wait to try it out. Thank you very much, Markus. It will be my pleasure uh, to be with you on the racetrack uh, with a new MRR. It's a challenge. And now I want to invite you to stay with me for more insights on the new MRR. As I mentioned before, the world premiere of the MRR is a milestone in the history of BMW Motorrad. The most powerful bike we have ever built includes for the first time the most powerful letter in the world in its name, M. The history of the development of the new MRR runs straight from the racetrack to this new high-performance serial production supersport race bike. The experience and knowledge gained from our World Superbike Championship Racing has been directly incorporated in the new MRR, reinforcing the motorsport racing DNA behind this bike. Pure racing technology for the highest performance demands, both in motorsport and on the road. In concrete terms, this means the MRR four-cylinder engine developed for the racing purposes with a peak output of 212 horsepower, featuring increased torque in the medium range and an increased maximum engine speed by 500 RPM. The new, almost 4 kg lighter, complete exhaust system made of titanium. M carbon fiber wheels as standard. A completely new aerodynamic package with M winglets and optimized windscreen provides even more stability in the curve and when accelerating. BMW Motorrad introduces M brakes for the first time. This gives the MRR best-in-class braking performance for the racetrack. In addition, there are a lot more technical refinements, such as the latest generation of Dynamic Traction Control, DTC, with six axis sensor box and two adjustable throttle curves for optimum response. Engine brake function with three settings, Shift Assistant Pro, Launch Control and Pit Lane Limiter. And the list of technical highlights goes on and on. And in order to give you even more insights into the MRR fireworks of technology, I would like to show you now some film footage that we took just last week at our test ground near Munich. Hi, Seb. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Dear motorcycle enthusiasts, my name is Mark Bongers, Motorsport Director for BMW Motorrad. I'm very proud and pleased to welcome you to the launch of the all-new M1000 RR. 
Sepp. My name is Sepp Mechler. I'm the product manager of the MRR. I'm very happy to ride this great bike. You break a bit of a sweat? You have a smile on your face? Yeah, it's the power. It's the power. It's the power. And M has a special reason why we called it M. Tell a little bit more about M, Mark. M on that bike, M on that bike. M stands for born on the racetrack. The requirements for the production bike are all performance related and come straight out of racing. Therefore, born on the racetrack into production. What do you need really for racing on the track and to be competitive in the World Superbike? A lot, because World Superbike is a production-based championship. That means that many of the components of the production bike must be taken one-to-one -to, -one to the World Superbike and cannot be modified. A very good example for that are these beautiful winglets. I can only use winglets on the World Superbike if they are mounted on the production bike in the exact shape and exact form. We have other two parts like the engine. Please tell a little bit about the engine. Well, the engine is another feature which will um, give us a performance benefit. We will be able to step up our performance based on the ingredients there. We've got titanium con rods, lighter pistons and an all new cylinder head, which um, will give us a higher power output, allow us for more revs and therefore a better base for this baby. 50,100 RPMs, 212 horsepower, BMW horsepower, and then we have full titanium exhaust system. The bike is very light, 192 kilo, M brakes, benchmark, the chassis. Please tell me a little bit about chassis. Well, the modifications I told you before were basically pure for World Superbike, but what you just told, the high performance brakes, the new chassis geometry, they will help many, many of the uh, hobby racers as well as the riders in the national championships. They run normally to the World Super Stock, which means the stock regulation allow nearly no changes. So this bike, the M1000RR, has all the ingredients for both the hobby racer all the way up to the pro. So, and that's what I feel on the racetrack. And the bike is street legal and it's a very nice bike and uh, Mark, Sorry, but I have to go for another lap. I understand you very well, Seb. See you soon. Have fun. I will have. It looks like fun. Dear motorcycle fans, the new MRR embodies pure motorsport racing in every single aspect, from its breathtaking design to its powerful performance. And this is exactly what this bike has in common with the philosophy of the M vehicles on four wheels, born on the racetrack. Everything is based on the perfect interplay between dynamic performance, agility, precision and suitability for everyday use. The new MRR will further strengthen the success of BMW Motorrad and is a consistent next step on the way to our stated goal of becoming the number one brand in the premium motorcycle market. And we have set ourselves even more ambitious goals for this year. So you can look forward to more BMW Motorrad world premieres in the near future. We are sure you have many questions about the new MRR. So join our experts in the studio and take a closer look. Wow, what a film and what a bike, and what a great way to start the day. Good morning and welcome to everyone on this historic and exciting day for BMW Motorrad. As Marcus said just now, it's the very first BMW M model on two wheels and the most powerful bike we've ever built. So I'm sure all of you out there wanna know much, much more about the new MRR, which will indeed be coming your way at great speed, of course, in the near future. So get your questions in, post them in the comments section and we'll try and answer as many of them as we can. Anyway, I'm delighted to tell you that we've asked Sepp and Mark, who you all just saw in that short film just now, to join us here, as well as BMW Motorrad World Superbike team rider, Tom Sykes, who's on the line from Spain and looking good, may I say. Welcome everybody. 
Very good Thank morning. You. Welcome. Right. Tom, let's start with you first. Thanks a lot for making the time to join us this morning. It's great to have you here with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, so finally, we've got an M version of the Double R, and you've been lucky enough to ride it, of course. But unlike your factory superbike, the M Double R is going to be available to buy early next year. So, can you explain to all the superbike fans watching exactly how the first M model from BMW Motorrad feels out on the track? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, it's uh, well. First and foremost, I think it's uh, now clear for everybody to see the effort from BMW and, and how beautiful that our version is. It's uh, the first moment I stepped on it. It's obviously a great pleasure to ride. You can see that all of the work that uh, we've been doing with the current model uh, and the, the input that we've had from the race team has gone directly into what you see now with the MRR, the, uh, just the new geometry, the way that the chassis is, is handling, the uh, upgrade in terms of uh, engine internals and the way that that delivers the extra power on the racetrack, it, uh, it's much more effortless and really is an amazing ride. Yeah, you know how it feels to win a World Superbike Championship, of course, Tom, and, and you know what it takes to develop, to develop a race bike. But what kind of features do you think make the MRR stand apart from the competition? Oh, I mean, for me, that's uh, that's quite simple. And again, the way that um, the whole of the BMW Motorrad World Superbike team is is working direct with the factory, um, for me, the key features have to be things like the chassis. What we've learned uh, on the racetrack, like I've just said, is gone directly into this M double R from you know from this current model. Um, and again, the upgrade in the braking system, which uh, the stopping performance is uh, really incredible with this model. Um, already with the with the current model, it was something I noticed, but now with the M double R, it's one step again. And again, the engine internals, the way that uh, this helps deliver the power, you know, the lightness of the components make the change of direction much more, let's say, effective, less effort, you know, less input from the rider. So really, it is an incredible bike, uh, like we saw in the video, not just for me at the top level, but, uh, you know, all the way down to, um, like you know hobby races club races it really is a uh, great all-round package yeah we're going to talk touch on some of the technical details with uh, sep shortly but i just want to touch on the letter m with you tom and four wheels actually because i know you drive an m5 back home in the uk and for those watching who've never had the pleasure of driving or even being a passenger in one can you describe what the m badge and what what those m cars mean in terms of performance well, I can. It, well, it, it's a smile first and foremost. I mean, uh, for me, the letter M is uh, is such a, an iconic letter, um, and it's all in terms of for me, motorsport and pure performance. It's as soon as I see the letter M, I know that there's a lot of work gone into that vehicle, or indeed that motorcycle in this case, because it's all focused on maximum performance. So yes, M5, uh, speaking of passenger, <laughs> there's a few stories I could tell with the passengers in that car, but um, yeah, I've always been a massive fan of the five series. So to get the M5 was a bit of a dream come true for me and such a, an amazing, experience to drive that you know it's uh, such a great balanced all-round car and uh, yeah hopefully i can keep that in my garage for a long time yeah you're a lucky lad now we've also seen the new <laughs> m4 and m3 models unveiled today and you and teammate eugene recently vis visited the hq of the m division in munich saw some of these latest products and even did a little bit of drift training on tracking an m4 um you must have really enjoyed that because those cars really come alive on the track. So I guess you sort of did a few things, learned a few things that maybe you shouldn't be doing back on the roads in the UK with your own M5. 
<laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's like that, that's the understatement of uh, of uh, of the day so far. But uh, what a what an incredible day! I mean, massive thanks to to BMW for for organising this uh, incredible day and, and a memorable memorable day that I'll never ever forget. I mean, I'm I'm passionate about four wheels anyway. And uh, I, I think I can speak also on Eugene's behalf that we had such a fantastic day. I mean, we were like two uh, two kids in the sweet shop, you know. Considering what we do on the track, to to do this was uh, was absolutely fantastic. Uh, really well organised. I mean, the, the the facilities that that we had were, you know, it's just something that that I've always dreamed about. And uh, I mean. It's funny that that few hours training felt like about ten minutes. So definitely something I'd love to revisit. Uh, but the drift training is fantastic. You know, just having to uh, understand how to use a throttle and the steering, and certainly uh, it's something that obviously I won't use on the road. But uh, you know, it might help me get out of trouble now and again. Yeah, that's one way of putting it anyway. But by the way, there's a great, great film on BMW Motorrad's YouTube channel if you've not seen that. So uh, yeah, well worth a watch. Now, back <laughs> to the bikes, Tom. And the M MRR is basically a street legal superbike, albeit anything but basic, of course. But do you feel it's got the potential to be competitive for races across all formats, you know, from sh short circuits and endurance to road racing? Wow, well, yeah, very much so. I mean, um, like I said, you can. I think you can appreciate, or everybody can appreciate, that the, you know, that the current model would only into its second year, and for for BMW to uh, make the effort that they have done and already come up with this MRR, already um, kind of lets everybody know how how serious they are about the racing, and for that reason, like I've said, we. Um, what we've learned on the racetrack in, in World Superbikes has been uh, taken note of. I mean, the, the link to the factory, it's it's direct. Everything that we do on the racetrack is is uh, is back in the factory uh, before you know it. And this, you know, this is the answer. This is what uh, everybody's come up with. So 100% now, this is uh, made the base of the package already a couple of steps higher so it's only going to benefit myself the club racer um the road user it's um, really a big step in terms of pure performance and that base level like i said is is already to go racing yeah and you've played a significant part in that of course in the in de development of double r and the new m double r so it's great that you're remaining with the team uh in 2021 so do you feel there's still a lot of potential still a lot more to come with the team and this package tom very much so and uh that for me was a massive part of trying to get everything agreed for the continuity um the whole of the bmw motor had well, Superbike team for me is uh, they have a fantastic infrastructure uh, and a way of working. And like I said, and I'll, I'll say it again, just to be clear, is that obviously it's very easy for us to get compared to other manufacturers in this time, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's easy. I've been around a while. I've got a lot of experience, and I just have to say we're only in our second year of the program. So I think what we've achieved so far is um, already quite special, um, and I think given time, we can we can arrive to where we all need to be and where we all uh, deserve to be because we're 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 all in it together. Obviously, the target from myself, and uh, you heard it a few moments ago from Doctor Shram. I think we're uh, we're all pushing to be number one. So uh, definitely now with this MRR, we have the ingredients to keep working. We've already seen where we're very strong on the track. We had some limitations um, up until now. And obviously with those limitations in mind, that's why uh, the release of the MRR is here. And uh, I feel that now we have, we have the answers to, to keep moving forward. 
Well said, Tom. Well said. Well explained. And cheers so far. Um, please stick around. Don't go anywhere because I'm sure we're going to come back to you shortly with some community questions. But let's move on to Mark Bar BMW Motorrad, who's also fresh back from last weekend's World Superbike Round at Magni Core. Hi there, Mark. How are you doing today? Hi, Andy. Very well, thank you. Just returned from Barcelona, yeah. Yeah, it's non-stop, non-stop. Now, listen, Mark, the letter M, it's the most powerful one on the street and on the track, of course, so it must be great for you to finally have it on a motorcycle. Uh, it definitely is. Um, M is, in, and it always has been an understatement for the cars. And uh, as Marcus Flash said before, it has now finally been transferred to the bikes in the first of uh, in the form of the first M double R. So uh, that's great. In um, in our case, M stands for born on the racetrack, which means uh, that the technical content of the bike makes it a, a real M. And <clears throat> besides that. In my personal opinion, I think the bike uh, looks great. I've always loved the charisma of the M colors, which we have been running on our World Superbike uh, since last year. Of course, knowing that this M double R would uh, would pop up. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does look great. Totally agree with you there. Now, <clears throat> there are certain elements that unite all races, like the will to win, the addiction to speed, and the search for adrenaline, of course. Now, this new bike is surely going to take all that to another level, won't it? Being it the first M, it, it will. Um, as I just mentioned, the bike was, was born and developed on the racetrack. Uh, that means that the input for its uh, specific key features have been defined in motorsport by us. Um, as a result, we're looking at a bike without compromises, more power, more RPM, uh, aerodynamic features in, in the form of the winglets and chassis geometry with the sole purpose of becoming faster on track for all classes yeah now it's a cliche but it's a true cliche they say racing improves the <clears> breed <throat> and we all love watching exciting superbike battles on the track and roads but there's also a clear business reason why bmw motorrad participates in motorsport so to continually improve the bikes its customers ultimately buy so how much of what your team is doing in competition testing and development has found its way into the new mrr uh, there's quite a few components which have found its way into uh, into the new MRR. Um, to name a couple of specific examples, uh, the offset and the head angle have been altered relative to the uh, SRR to improve high speed stability and the uh, turning behavior of the bike. Um, furthermore, we adapted the geometry of the rear linkage and the pivot points and uh, the key figures um, for this and the references come straight from the World Superbike. These values are actually one to one. And when it comes to the aerodynamics in the engine, um, as Tom mentioned before as well, we have identified certain limiting factors in the racing conditions and have requested some technical features for the MRR to overcome these limitations, uh, to have an improved base since we cannot modify them um, due to regulations. Hence, we've got the winglets, higher revs, more power, stronger brake, etc. There's There's many parts, Sepp will go through them in a minute. And these modifications will uh, benefit both the World Superbike as well as all the national classes all the way down to the hobby races. So to put it in a nutshell, um, going faster will be made easier. Yeah, looking forward to it. Now, M, it's a letter, it's an attitude, a philosophy even, that, that really stirs the emotions. I mean, many drivers can have a two, three, four, five series BMW car, but an M2, M3, M4 and M5, these versions, they get you loads more power, more adrenaline, more sporting character. Do you feel it's going to be the same with the MRR? You know, a kind of <clears throat> exclusive club for those thrill seekers who never stop challenging themselves and really thrive on pushing the limits. I think with bikes, it's in general slightly different. Uh, because if we take, for example, the SRR, um, this bike already accelerates from zero to 200 in around six seconds. And I think that's a quite thrilling fact on its own. Um, however, if you are this absolute thrill seeker, which would never stop challenging yourself and tries to push matters to the limit, 
um, he or she will definitely have their limits set further away by the MRR, which leaves more um, room for personal challenges. So all in all, yes, the M will get you more power, more adrenaline, more sporting character, but the gap between the S and the M uh, would not resemble entirely to the cars since the benchmark is already set at a very high performance level. Sure, yeah, don't we know it. Now the MRR, it's street legal, of course, but it's also race ready for customers across the globe. So what about access to technical support and expertise, as in the past? Will this race support also be part of the program, Mark? Yes, it will be. We will definitely continue our uh, technical support and expertise. The exact arrangement of that and the execution of the uh, support can differ between the region, uh, but it's in general tailor suit to the championships and or activities in the various uh, countries. Um, one, one another important point to point out is that we have, uh, we will continue the guarantee that our customer, being it from hobby racing all the way to World Superbike, they will have access to the latest kits parts, uh, which we prepared and developed for both the S1000RR and the M1000RR um, through our partner Alpha Racing. So the availability of these parts um, is highly important for the success on the racetrack um, and the availability will coincide with the introduction of the bike so those who want to go racing or who want to use their bike on the racetrack they can do this as soon as they receive the bike from the dealer yeah that's really great news and uh, so the excitement continues so thanks thanks for all that detailed input mark stick with us for now uh, I'd like to bring Sepp into the conversation if I can, because uh, I've known him for many years, but I've never seen him smile as wide as what I saw in that movie just before. So, morning, Sepp. How are you, mate? I love the I love your garage. Um, morning, Andy. Yeah, it's I love my personal garage. No, it's a garage of BMW. I love to be here and to have a chat with you. Yeah, listen. I know you've been pushing for something like this for a long time. So, how does it feel? to finally see that special M letter proudly displayed on the double R. Absolutely proud. Proud for the whole team, proud for the whole BMW. It's, it's a long time waiting for M double R and now we are here with the M and it's just, I can just say, like that. It's great. <laughs> now, the standard double R, it's a formidable package as we all know, but the M double R takes things to the next level. So can you please remind us of a few of those important stats? We've heard them already, but I just want to want you to go into them again. You know, I'm talking about acceleration, top speed, horsepower, dry weight, all those kind of things. Tell us more. I love to do that. So we need a half hour to do this. No, make it really short. <laughs> the, you see on the sheet what, what, what the bike is doing, but what Mark is saying as well from zero till 200, we under seven seconds close to six uh, to 400 uh, meters zero to 400 meters under 10 seconds a top speed is 306 uh, horsepower 212 wide weight of the bike 192 ready on racetrack it's definitely down on 190 it's uh, a lot of power inside yeah, absolutely. And equally impressive is the way that the bike looks, not just how it performs. So can you tell us what the differences are between the MRR and the MRR with M competition package set? Absolutely. So the MRR is based on the Superstock regulation. The price is 33,000 euro in Germany. And the M competition package is for those guys who want to show all the nice parts which we have. So we have here a lot of carbon, we have this part on carbon, we have this part on carbon, then we have the M brake levers, really easily adjustable, then we have the M brake lever guards, then if you come here, this is really a masterpiece, it's our food rest, it's machined, you have a lot of grip, you can adjust in every kind of position, and if we go on the other side of the bike, then it comes uh, much more interesting stuff, so because we have here a little more carbon, we have here as well carbon, and then here we have the chain, the M endurance chain. This chain is need less maintenance and deliver till one till two percent more horsepower on the rear. So we have definitely go for that, and then it's aluminium swing. So we have a special word for that for this swing arm. What is the name? 
anodized, is it you mean? Exactly. So and it's 220 grams lighter. That's so I would Fantastic. say go for the M competition package. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Listen, loads and loads to think about and look at there. But let's go into more detail, Sepp, about some of the new features. Starting with those uh, winglets, that's a good place to start. Now, they're carbon, so they weigh nothing at all. But I read somewhere they generate a downforce of about 16 kilograms. So how did you develop them and, and what are the overall performance benefits? So, uh, yes, it's 60.2 kilogram. And uh, the benefit of BMW is we have a big uh, R&D department, we have our own wind tunnel, which you can see now, and those wind, uh, we play around which is the best downforce, which is the best benefit of handling. If you have a lot of downforce, you lose a little bit of handling, so we figure out which is the best balance. And uh, the target is same top speed, so we have 306 kilometer, we have a higher windscreen, and then the benefit is if you have the winglets, they keep the front down. So that means that the dynamic traction control has to work less. So you come faster out of the corner, you're faster on the entrance of the next corner. The winglets give you there as well stability and as well in the mid middle part of the corner. So winglet is a very, very important part. And we are very, very happy to see these very beautiful carbon winglets on our bike. Yeah, you can never have too much carbon, that's for sure, especially when, when it functions, when it really, really works. Now, speaking of things functioning and working really, really well, we know a lot of races are one on the brakes, especially on the final lap. Now, there's a new M braking system with the MRR, so what can we expect from this up? This brakes, first it looks pretty cool with the blue M brake caliper, but it's crystal clear. Crystal clear means if you start to brake, you you know from the first tenth of a second what, what your front wheel is doing. So you have a very good feedback. It's extremely uh, stability in terms of temperature and all that stuff. So this is really good. So uh, it's absolutely benchmark, this brake. And if you go to the rear, if you, if you look more, so it's the brake. It's, yeah. And we have a lot of stuff which you maybe have as well a question regarding on the rear because we can show you here as well what something. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at that uh, full titanium exhaust system there. And now I'm not sure what the set weight savings are, but I think they're around four kilograms or something like that. Exactly. It's three, 3,657 gram uh, weight saving. And uh, yeah. So what's the actual benefits of this when out on track then and, for example, you know, flipping the bike from side to side in turns? So the center of gravity, if you have a, a heavy exhaust system, the center of gravity is a little bit lower. So we bring it a little bit up in the middle center of gravity. So that brings you a big benefit in terms of changing corners. The bike feels very nimble, very light. And it's as well a big benefit on the road. So you feel it directly if you go 20 miles, 50 kilometers, 80 kilometers, you feel it as well on the road. Yeah. Now, just look, staying at the rear end very briefly, Seth, I believe there are some changes also to the rear axle that team technicians everywhere are going to be super pleased about. Absolutely. If we, if we go a little bit closer and we see the rear brake caliper, it's mounted on this lock, so it's very easy to remove the rear wheel and put it in. So this is a very, very benefit because on the racetrack, you often change the rear wheel because you need a new tire or you want to test another slick. So this is, helps all the races from hobby racing till super stock. Yeah, just going back to the motor then, Sepp. Now that's obviously been developed for pure performance. You mentioned already top speeds over 300 kilometers, 212 horsepower, at, I think 14 and a half RPM, zero to 200 kilometer an hour, acceleration times inside seven seconds. Technically, how did the team make all of this possible, Sepp? Uh, testing, testing, testing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always testing and to figure out if something is working, if something is working better. We have titanium conrads, those are 360 grams lighter, those fours. Then we have uh, the Marley pistons, which all together bring as well 48 uh, grams. And then the rocker arms are as well 6% lighter and all that with the new cylinder hair where it's more stiff, we can go high refs, 50,100, that's a real high ref limit. And this brings extra top power and the engines feel very free if they rev it out. 
Yeah, sure. No. Now, obviously, the chassis and geometry of the MRR, they're designed to work on the racetrack predominantly, but does this package also translate well to sporty road riding? Absolutely, absolutely, because we turned the whole chassis geometer a little bit to the back, so the bike is extremely stable if you come out of the corner, helps you, and uh, as well on the braking section. Those uh, benefit is definitely on the racetrack, but on the road is well a benefit if you go very sporty on the road, the chassis helps you absolutely. Yeah. Listen, final question from me for now, Sepp, and I think it's one that will be of interest to all the privateers and semi-pros out there. As a complete package, just how race-ready is the MRR straight out of the box? I'm not allowed to say that this word, but it's absolutely <laughs> ready for racing. And uh, I guess it's my next bike, which I have to buy. It's uh, from Racing for Fun guys over National Race Series to Superstock. This is the tool which fights for the title. Yeah, cheers, Sepp. It's, it's really clear to see your passion for this bike. Not just you, but everybody, in fact, that we've heard talk about it today. And there's loads of excitement out there, that's for sure. So in the time we've got left, let's open things up to our motorsport community just for a few final questions. So I don't know if you're able to bring any of the questions up on the screen and uh, I shall read them out in case you can't read them. Let's have a look and see what we've got. We've got anything on the screen coming in? Not at the moment. I've got a few questions of my own in that, in that case, and I'm just going to, while I've, oh, here we go. Ah, okay, here's one. All right, this is probably going to be one for you, Sepp, I would imagine. Uh, when will the MRRs be available to buy, and are dealers taking deposits now? Dealer definitely taking deposits now. The bike will be on sale end of March, beginning of April. So go to your dealer and uh, make the deposit. <laughs> Not too long to wait in that case. Superb. Okay, the <laughs> next question. All right. I guess this one's going to be for you, Tom. Um, I'm a 2017. Oh, no, I'm actually going to stick with you for this one, Sepp, because uh, it's a product question. I'm a 2017 double R owner. What differences would I feel between my own bike and the new MRR out on the road and the track? So first, uh, the 2017 RR is a very nice bike, very good bike. The 2017 bike is on the road a little bit better because of the MRR, the, the playground is the racetrack. So this bike is uh, performing much better on the racetrack than the double R. So, and it has more horsepower. Your bike has 199, this has 212, and this bike is uh, 15 kilos lighter as the 2017. So that's the, the main figures. Yeah, so I guess it's just a case of uh, test ride the new bike as soon as you can and uh, make your mind up. Okay, this one starts, hey Tom, so we know it's for you, Tom. So do you feel like the gap between a factory superbike and a customer version is growing smaller all the time, Tom? Yeah, very much so. I'd say 100% the case. I mean, like uh, Mark touched on earlier, basically the regulations in the... Uh, in the Superbike World Championship are getting more kind of restrictive all the time. So for that reason, you've seen manufacturers make much more of an effort with their base production uh, model, just in order to um, do what we need to do on the racetrack. Uh, and I think the, the MRR is an absolute fantastic example of this. The input, you know, like we've just seen from the chassis, the braking, the uh, you know the brake system, the upgrade in the engine, you know internal engine components. Um, so yes, in answer to the question, that gap is getting smaller uh, all the time, and in fact year on year, which is why you know the the, the customer for the road is getting a, an unbelievable product, you know especially for the for the price, the the product that they get now is is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the uh, already from, from the showroom, you can take this onto the racetrack and get incredible results. There you go. You heard it from the man himself, straight from the horse's mouth. Thanks, Tom. Next question, please. 
All right. Okay, I'm going to stick. I'm going to ask this one to uh, to Mark. Actually, do you expect the MRR to already be competitive enough to be used by racers in set championships? I'm presuming national championships all over the world, uh, Mark. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we will have all our race parts, as I said before, ready as soon as the bike is available, uh, including the uh, electronic package. I guess that means the super stock championships around the world. Um, so, yes, I am absolutely convinced that we'll be competitive straight from the start with this bike because it has a lot more to offer. Good stuff. Good to know. Okay, super. Thanks for that, Mark. Can we have the next question on the screen, please? <laughs> All right. There's some. I'm going to uh, push this one over to you, Tom. There's somebody here who, who's got a lot of money because he's he's doing about 15 track days a year on his double R, but he isn't getting any faster. Um, Apart from the advice I would give him about buying an MRR and getting on an official BMW race course, can you give him any advice in terms of improving his own lap times on his own bike? Yeah, do 16 track days. Um, no, it's um, <laughs> no, like you said, get, get on the uh, get on the BMW training school and uh, and give me a call. But uh, joking aside, it. Um, I think it all depends what what you're looking to achieve certainly if you find a block you know then you probably do need to take some advice uh, you know to try and break through and and uh, get to the next level i have to say it also depends what what the reference is because if you're trying to chase you know a lap time that's been set uh, by a bike with better tires or um, upgraded suspension etc etc then you know there's that also to take into account but certainly from my side i've uh, i always look at riding a motorcycle or racing a motorcycle both of those just i'd look at that as having fun because when i'm having fun i always figure out what's needed to to go faster but for i have to be honest it's difficult to answer that question because unless i actually saw uh, that rider in person and on track it, it's hard to it's hard to say take that line or you know break that little bit further you know it's so easy the you know and i've seen on track days as well quite a lot of riders uh always rush into the into the turn with a lot of break and uh, and then from there they're not able to get onto the power again so a little bit difficult for me to to give advice when i've when i've not seen that uh, that rider live on track so sorry about that sorry for not being much use this time <laughs> no i mean i think i think what like you said you know the official advice get an, get an official bmw race school and uh, you'll learn absolutely loads and uh, you can search those up online of course i think we've maybe got time for one more question if there's one that can be put up on the screen all right, I'm going to throw this one to you, Mark, because um, it's something I'm quite interested in the answer to. Um, how well would you expect the MRR to perform around the Isle of Man TT or Northwest 200 course or any road racing course, I guess, with so many different types of road and weather conditions possible all in a long lap? Uh, it is definitely a very different type of racing. I mean, we have had already many successes there in the past in both the Northwest and uh, as well as on the Isle of Men. Um, record holder with Peter Hickman, fastest road racer of the world, um, which already comes to the point of explaining it. I am convinced that the MRR is uh, a better base because these races are so specifically fast. Uh, with high, high average speeds, uh, meaning you need a lot of engine power and you need a stable bike. And compared to the previous SRR, the MRR definitely delivers you more high speed stability and more power, i.e. more top speed. And also the winglets will help you keeping the front down over all these, over all these bumps. So... I am positive that we are going to continue our streak of success on the road races. 
Yeah, and let's hope we can uh, see those again soon for sure. So, all right, we better leave it there for now because while all this talking has made me want to get out and ride, that's for sure. So what a great start to the day it's been for sports bike fans who've just seen the bar raised even higher than before, you know, with those two iconic letters, double R, being joined by a third M for the most powerful series production bike in BMW Motorrad history. If you want to know even more, get online and check your local BMW Motorrad website for all the details about the stunning new double R. And by the way, as Sepp said earlier, it's going to be in your showrooms from early next year. So keep in touch with your local dealer about that one. So well, all that remains for me to do now is thank Tom, Mark and some guests today and sharing all this news with us. Sepp, keep yourself smiling. Tom and Mark, we wish you and the team the very best for the remaining two rounds of this year's championship. We're now all really looking forward to 2021 with even more interest and anticipation than before. So thanks for coming on, guys. It's farewell from all of us here. And thanks once again for all of you out there joining us on this special day. So make sure you race back soon for even more good news coming your way. Bye for now. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All Bye right. for now. Enjoy the Always ride. A pleasure.